All right, this is long overdue, but we are finally showing you the Olympic trials. Yes, let's go. Best performer of all time, representing Craig Smith, Ashton Lawler. Come on. Run, babe, run. Come on, babe, run. Come on, babe. Just finish this race. Okay, so obviously it wasn't my best race. Uh, coming in, my hamstring was a little tight. Uh, I wasn't able to practice for like a week and a half. After the wreck, unfortunately, hamstring was not feeling good. Adrenaline was going, so just like, I'm gonna run on these hurdles as fast as I can. Unfortunately, I banged number two, so that threw off my rhythm, but I didn't fall, so I was able to finish with a 13.79, so. Which was like a half second off her PO. Yeah, which I ran earlier that year, but yeah. it's okay. That it's, hurt, tough way to start. Yeah, but I made it through the race, and on to high jump. <laughs> Okay, so high jump obviously was a little disappointing. Um, definitely was wanting 5'10". I cleared 5'5 five, five first attempt, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, 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 first attempt, and then 5'10", missed all three attempts, which was a bummer because second attempt should have cleared it, but that's okay. Just behind a few hundred points now um, out of the bat, which clawing and fighting my way up the rest of the meet after this, so. Really proud of her though. I mean, that's a tough way to start in the heptathlon. You want to have two solid events to start your hep off, yeah. especially at the Olympic trials, and to come out subpar for her both times and still keep fighting. That so was tough. Something we said about that. Yeah, that was tough. Thanks, babe. But no, lots of tears were, were shed after this, but um, we rallied and we're thinking about shot put Prayed. and wanting a big PR shot put. So let's see what happens. I don't know what happened to my third attempt, but my second attempt was my best. Just what the doctor ordered. Just, just what we needed. Um, after that throw, I walked over to Wolf and I hugged him and we cried together because we were needing that so bad. And it just up, uplifted my spirits. Gave What'd me you some throw? 46 8? 46 8 and a quarter. I got second overall. And How it, big of a PR for was that, that event, that was almost a three foot two. Foot, two and a half foot PR. Two and a half foot PR. Yeah, that two was. Two and a half feet. That was insane. So I was not expect. I knew I could do it, but I wasn't expecting it after such a rough two events. Um, but God just answered my prayers, our prayers. But no, that was a really sweet moment that we shared together after that. It was probably my favorite moment during the trials, just coming and hugging Wolf and crying. I was so proud of her. <laughs> oh. So proud of her. Yes. So now for 200. Uh-oh. Air conditioner kicked on. AC just kicked on. That. Now for the 200, which after a couple hours, my hamstring was 
tightened up pretty bad and I was telling Wolf like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this race I'm gonna start it and see how it goes because it was that bad yeah we were worried very worried yeah I thought I thought it might be over because she hadn't run in a while you do shot put and you're kind of letting the hamstring cool down get a little shorter it's not running and pumping blood into it so it was yeah. tough forming back up for the, for the 200 yeah Let's see how it goes In section two, Hawkins Moore, Albert and Coons and Reynolds. Danny Coons, you'll get all leader after three of the Come on, Ashton, Come on, Ashton Ray. Come on, baby, Ray. Come on, baby. Let's go. All the way through. All the way through. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I was really praying for that finish line to come a lot sooner than it did. <laughs> it wasn't soon enough. I was afraid it was not ever gonna, I was never gonna get there. Um, but that was really hard because leading up to um, this meet, we had been focusing on sprinting and getting faster and I was so looking forward to PRing in the 200 and running 23 for the first time and seeing 24-4 um, up there again was really just, ugh, but I was thankful to have finished. Um, you know, praise the Lord, that my hamstring held up, but it was definitely hurting a lot after that race. Yeah, and as a coach, I want to know what she could have run had she not yeah. been feeling bad, <laughs> trying not to pop a hand. I know. So I think she was on. She was on her best game. We did everything right, preparing for it, mm -hmm. and uh, gosh, it's just tough. Yeah. That was the end of day one, all the events day one. We had four events, and we immediately saw a trainer uh, because my hamstring was so tight. I was afraid I wasn't able to do day two. Um, and we walk into the training room because they have a bunch of uh, medical staff that are on call to help us athletes and sign my name up. And next thing you know, I get introduced to this guy. First thing he says is, uh, you're the only other Ashton I've ever worked on. And I'm thinking to myself, the only Ashton I know is Ashton Eaton. And he's like, you know, the world's best decathlete in our eyes, besides obviously Kevin yeah. Mayer, who just broke the world record a couple years ago, and thinking, oh my God, is this guy Ashton Eaton's trainer? And it was, it was Ashton Eaton's trainer, his personal trainer, coming to work on my hamstring, which was crazy, and he worked wonders, it was magical, spent like an hour and a half on my hamstring that day, and he was, he was surprised. He's like, this is bad. Um, how did you compete on this? And I was like, by the grace of God, <laughs> I don't know how I did, but he cured me and I iced really good after that um, at the Tracksmith house, which was really cool. So. She saw him again the next morning and we're like, all right, one more sprinting event. That's the long jump. Then mm -hmm. it's Javelin and 800. She could get through those with a bad hamstring yeah. or not a perfect hamstring. Yeah. Get to the long jump. That's all I was thinking. That's get all she was jump. thinking. Yeah. Good job. Our eighth overall, 3,669. Good job. Good job. Jump, good jump, bunch of good <laughs> that, jumps. That made me laugh. And another PR. And another PR. The second attempt was the longest. I was a centimeter away from 20 feet, She's which been was- trying to hit 20 for a long time. Uh, so, um, I don't know if you know this, but a heat wave had blew in through Oregon. There's a temperature reader on the track and it said 100 degrees and that was at long jump at like noon. So it just gets hotter at the end of the, at the end of the day. So by javelin, it's at the hottest and everyone's soaking us in towels and icing literally everything we can because it's just evaporating so quickly. It's just crazy. It was the craziest two days I've ever experienced. It got to 113 and it stayed there for like three hours and the surface temp of the track was 150. The surface temp of the track, yeah. 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 It was crazy. It was crazy. I remember lining up for the 200 and the 100 hurdles just like praying they would start the gun because my hands were burning and I've even heard girls' knees were bleeding from being in the blocks. So it was intense, but let's get to Javelin because that's my favorite event. Come on, big first throw. Big one, go get it. Yes!
It's getting dark out here, but um, yeah, so that was a little disappointing. I did win the event, which was awesome. <laughs> which <laughs> a little disappointing, won the event, new Olympic trials record. Okay, yes, just it's a new a record. Little disappointing. Uh, just because Sorry, earlier in the year we'd thrown about two meters further, which I was hoping for a huge PR so I could jump up in the standings a little more, but that did bring me up in fourth, which is awesome. Um, really needed that. And it was a lot of fun. You could hear my family screaming, my dad yelling, of course, let's go, get out there, and all that stuff. That's my favorite thing to hear from the videos I watch afterwards. Um, but they knew when a throw dies, you know, they make the, oh, they knew. But um, obviously first throw, best throw, and next is the 800. Not known for her 800 skills, so she was fighting to keep her place. Yes, that's very true. A plus with the heat, um, Winnie, our camper, was overheating. The AC was not working, and oh, yeah. I had to go to Mike uh, to Wolf's parents, Michael and Angela's apartment, to cool down. Literally, Hotel. I took two ice showers, and I put like wet rags on my body. I just was so hot; my my body was burning up, and I didn't really get to nap. I was hoping to, like to rest because we had a four-hour delay because a girl passed out because that's how hot it was, and. So we were running late at night, I think 9 p.m. at night, um, so that it could cool down two degrees. Because <laughs> it was still like 111 at 9 p.m. at night. Like I was saying, I was having a hard time cooling off, and so when I was warming up for the 800, I had a little bit of a scare with mm. Wolf. You remember that? Mm -hmm. I was worried. I yeah. almost didn't. I wasn't going to keep her from running, but I was almost very worried about her. I was very worried about her running because she almost passed out right before the race. Well, just, you know, you warm up again after four hours of a break, and then I was getting a little dizzy uh, with my strides and kind of, like, losing. Just everything was a little bit of a blur, a little dizzy. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. Like, I typically are very focused with a lot of adrenaline kicking in, and I wasn't getting that reaction. Instead, I was like, okay, which lane am I in? So I was coming to Wolf, I was like, something's not right. Like, I'm afraid I'm gonna pass out. And, Cause the girl did pass out before. So I dunked, literally dunked my head in ice and he came with wash rags and, and Samara, our um, previous massage like therapist guru came over and she was so worried. Osteopath. She, osteopath. She was helping me cool off and a whole drama scene I felt like and I was so worried I wasn't even going to make the starting line of the race but. It was DEFCON 5. <laughs> yes, I was literally. worried but she made it and she made it around the track twice and yes. it was almost a PR. In yes. The event. Must have just been Olympic trials magic. I think it was because I don't remember a thing about that race. <laughs> I was just in don't pass out mode just like Run, keep running, keep running, keep running. So that was fun, and and you'll see that. Thirty-five, Betty Holmberg Nickel. In late to the third overall, fifty-seven, sixty, best performer of all time, represents Ashton Waller. In late times, go Ashton. Easy. And section number two. Linda Williams, the leader at 58-16. Annie Coons is just two points behind in second. Bogart and Williams are the only two in the field with the Olympic Games qualifying standard. Out in front, Michelle Latherly, University of Miami. He was the NCAA runner-up for the Tathlon. And Bogart in second. 
And to Bogart, third overall of 57-16. Hatherley and Bogard, Annie Coates. Coates had an outstanding two days. 60 flat at the bell. Hatherley. Come on, Ashton. Be strong. Be strong, Ben. And Hawkins in the third. Sherry Hawkins, she's fifth overall at 5394. 200 to go, Michelle Abbey. The NCAA runner-up from Miami. Erica Bogart. Five-time world championship qualifier. Bogart has a lifetime best score of 67-25, the number four U.S. performer of all time. Come on, make it around, and make it around, just Bogart make it around. Bogart is off the turn. Natalie and Bogart. Come on, babe, just make it. And Coop. Just make it around, babe, Natalie come on. Natalie Bogart. Come on, Ashton Bell. Lean forward, babe, lean forward. Lean forward. Lean forward, you got it. You got it. Oh. Oh. Good job, Ashton! Oh. All right, Charles, for 17. He was trying not to pass out before. dark guys um, and now I can't see <laughs> yeah but we just like the 800 we finished in the dark and it was so magical and cool with all the lights shining on all the crowd cheering us on and uh, Wolf being there to, to hug it's and... like front row watching the whole race <laughs> yes. filming it's so cool just the Olympic trials that new stadium mm -hmm. One of the <sighs> can't wait to go back there yes world we'll be back I finished fifth overall and it was an amazing experience. Loved every second of it, even though it was a lot of ups and downs and roller coaster ride, but that's the have, you know? And I embrace and enjoy every single one of them and learn from every single one of them. So for us, that was the end of the road, end of our journey. And now looking forward to Paris 2024. It's not the end of the road. It's not the end of the road. No, we're gonna keep training to Paris 2024. It's but a stop sign. It is the end of that road. I believe in this girl. Y'all should too. She's gonna kick butt this next year and the years after. And I can't wait to watch her and travel around the country following her and her little jumping, throwing. <laughs> well, you too, babe. You too. But no, I, I am so thankful to have Wolfie next to me, coaching me the whole way through. It's right, really been enough. the best. Eyes. It's been the so best ever. And I the love it. hardcore athletes. We can't yell <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, hope you stay tuned for more, more cool vids to come. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Bye. See you.